Welcome, everyone, to Music Junkies, a podcast about people sharing extraordinary stories about how music has impacted their lives. Welcome, everyone, to Music Junkies. I'm your host, Annette Smith, and our guest today is my son. Look at how handsome he is. Well, if you can't see him and you can just hear him, you'll wait till his voice because it's very handsome. <laughs> Isaiah, finally, after 50 episodes, you finally said, yes, mom, I'll do the podcast. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. So I've had your playlist for a long time. Uh, how was your experience putting your playlist together? It was all right. I... Um had a bit of trouble just narrowing it down to 10 um and i couldn't really use songs that i listen to now i had to put songs from like way back when just yeah. because the songs that i listened to back then they've just manifested into different genres and stuff like that so it's not really um particularly what i listen to anymore but i still do kind of listen to some aspects of those sub genres yeah so we listened to this playlist going out to the property and it was very aggressive. Yeah. Right. It was, <laughs> I was laughing a lot. Um, if you had to describe your playlist to somebody, how would you describe your playlist? Oh, I don't even know. Um, like I said, it just, these are the songs that like kind of put me into music more or less, or from what I can remember. So yeah. it's more or less just like being, you know, 14 to like, 18 and just going through that i guess not really anything in particular other than that i love it it's awesome okay you ready ready to get started mm -hmm. okay here's your first song can you feel your heart be racing can you taste the fear in your sweat boy rushed red living in black yeah so what is your first memory or why do you love that song so much? Um, the first memory of this song is it's probably the first like uh, death, like death metal screamo song that I can remember. Um, and that type of music is what has been something I listen to solely in the gym, literally from that day on. So Under Oath is probably the first band I ever heard that like, had this style of music and then it's just something that I've always listened to in the gym so just gets you pumped up yeah I mean the gym is uh an outlet more or less for me it's not really about health and stuff like that um I just use it to release my anger and stuff and aggression and stuff like that and then just listening to this music like puts me in that like state like it puts me back to a place of like getting angry and like all that shit and then i want to just like go murder stuff like that's literally what it is like it actually brings out that side of me that allows me to go do my lifts like that's why not murder people yeah exactly <laughs> it probably keeps me away from murdering people because i can go turn into that person and then let let that person be that person in that moment and then just release all that and then go about my day you don't want to do like angry dancing or anything like that no i prefer physically like going through something like that like the pain the process the feeling heavy weight on my body and then just like exerting that energy um that's what that music brings for me. I don't listen to that out outside of anywhere other than working, working out. out. Yeah. Or any super physically aggressive activity, like before rugby games or before, you know, like if I was to go box or something like that, that would be what I would listen to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who got you into scream metal? How'd you fall upon it? No one. I don't even know how I got into it. I literally just heard it and that, that was like, I was in, interested in it because it was 
these guys are actually really good singers, even though they scream. It's just when they stop screaming, that's when you hear their voice during the screaming. You're like, what the hell is this? Right. But it's just, yeah, I had no one introduced me to it. I don't think you like just kind of found it on your own. I just like heard this song because it was really popular in a video game, I think at the time, like some racing video game. And then I was like, oh, what the hell is this? I like looked up the soundtrack and then I found this band and then I started listening to them. There was a few bands that I was going to put on here other than this band. But this is probably the first song I ever heard that like had true screamo in it. So I was like, OK, I'll use this one. A lot a lot of these songs are like that because I listen to much better versions of this <laughs> genre of music now. But that's this band is probably like 20 years old or whatever, right? Yeah. Like they're probably 17, 18 when they made this song. Like, I love it. It's good. So this next song, BD, The Weeknd. Yeah, so. So let's get it. Time you She's saying that's So you do know this is a Michael Jackson song. Right? Yeah, I know. Dirty Diana. Yeah, so he did a remix of it. And the reason why I picked this song is because everybody knows The Weeknd from his first song, like Wicked Games, or the first song that made him famous. But it's really funny because The Weeknd is like an R&B singer, but people don't understand what he sings about. They just think that he's, you know, he's got a really good voice and blah, blah, blah. But he talks about like really messed up music like things and uh, nobody really listens to that and they sing along to it and they don't even know what they're singing or talking about yeah and the weekend is probably my favorite r&b artist because his voice is just so good um, but he also sings about certain things that just are like i don't know that are different and yeah. same with like ed sheeran or whatever people don't really realize what he sings about he sings about drug abuse and alcohol abuse and abuse of childhood and things like that so like people don't really understand what they're singing they're like oh this is just so great and then you like you break the lyrics down and they're like oh do you even realize what you're singing about like my favorite song by him is called uh initiation and it's i didn't even know what the lyrics were for like five years and then I started breaking them down and it's literally a guy talking about taking a girl to like a club with his like five friends and then they go home and do cocaine together and then have an orgy. Wow. <laughs> but people are like singing this song on yeah. the radio and like they have no idea what's going on. And like the song, I can't feel my face without you. Yeah. Is about him doing cocaine and yeah. he won a teen's choice award yeah and he was like do you guys even know what the fuck i sing about <laughs> like what like when he got the award he was like on stage like why am i getting this award why am i being nominated for team choice i'm literally talking about drugs with girls right now yeah like and i think that bothers him because his like he does make pop music, but he has a very specific type of style of music. And he's not not really recognized for that. He's recognized for those like poppy songs and yeah. shit like that. And I feel like he hates it because all of his more recent albums are bringing back that kind of style that he started with that yeah. didn't really make him famous because people either just weren't paying attention or didn't want to hear that. Yeah. But when artists do that, I think that's much better because I it's like, too. you know, it's like whatever, you know, his situation, he was like homeless and things like that. So it's like, that's the stuff as an artist you should be singing about because that's what you're most passionate about. Yeah. Um, just because your manager says you need to make a pop song and you get recognized for that, you know, that's not the genre of music that these artists usually create. Yeah. They make it to make money. But then the 15 other songs on their albums are what they want to make, yeah. right? Yeah, I love it. So Isaiah, if you woke up tomorrow and you were 200 pounds heavier, would you rather keep that weight or lose your penis? Uh, I'd probably lose my penis. <laughs> really? Yeah, I've 
like I've been big, like I got up to 230, like 233 is probably the biggest I've ever been. And right now I'm probably like one, 190, 195 ish. And, uh, I remember being like, I wanted to get to 240 with my, like first coach I ever hired. And I, once I got past like 210, 215, I was literally eating so much food, um, and like waking up every couple hours just to eat, to get that big. Um, just because I, I have a hard time getting big. And when I get big, it's like, I have to do a lot to get big. Um, so if I was to ever be that big again, it would just like, like you'd four, rather lose your penis over getting yeah, pounds? for sure. Because <laughs> there's like the, the pain and suffering that you have to go through to be that big. Like, and if it wasn't a choice, like yeah. it would just be too much because I've been the biggest I've ever been was horrible. And I couldn't even get to my 240 goal because once I got over 230, I was like telling my coach, like, this fucking sucks. Like, and he was like, You don't even need to be this big. Like, but you that was your goal. So we're getting you that big. And yeah. I was like, Well, yeah, like I'm done. Like, we need to cut. And that was the first time I actually did a cut too. And I lost like 50 or 60 pounds and it was pointless like I got that big to get the same size smallness I was yeah and it did no difference for me yeah what but, is what is something that somebody might not know about you Isaiah I don't know I'm a pretty open book I don't really have anything like I eat sleep train and make money that's all I do <laughs> uh, so do you have any hobbies do you collect anything are you a hopeless romantic? No, like the, the only thing I do is work out and work. And that's about it. Like I've recently started running, but I don't have any particular hobbies. I used to play a lot of video games and stuff, but I don't even play video games anymore. So other than that, like pretty basic stuff. <laughs> pretty basic guy. Yeah. So Thomas Rhett die a happy man yeah why do you love that song well i don't love the song i actually <laughs> hate country um the only reason i like this song is because it's the it reminds me of my girlfriend that i'm going to be engaged to soon and i just this is the only song i can like tolerate per se and when i think about it i just think about her and just like everything we've been through and yeah <laughs> why do you love megan uh there's a lot of things i love about her <laughs> it's hard to even explain really there's a lot of things that sucked for a long time but are now pretty good so i think I, it was just weird for our relationship because when i got single again i uh i pretty much decided that the next girl was going to be it no matter what um and that was my number one goal like it was okay I'm single uh I you know did x y and z I was angry at my ex for a long time but it wasn't really her fault because it's I took the blame upon myself uh, mainly because at the end of the day like of of course, you're going to cheat on someone that's never around. Uh, of course, you're going to do X, Y, and Z when all that person does is work and work out, right? So, you know, working two, three jobs and then never being home and always at the gym or dieting or whatever. That just situation happened. I was angry, didn't understand why. And then I started looking like, oh, okay, well, looking at all my past relationships, this is the same pattern. It always goes through. So what's the issue here? The issue can't be the girls every single time, right? Uh, I mean, nobody's perfect. So there is some blame on them. But at the end of the day, it's I'm in control of most of the situations. And that's just the way I looked at it. After that, I was single and I partied a lot and had a lot of fun, met a lot of girls. And 
did my thing because I was bachelor and I owned my own building and condo and I could do whatever I wanted per se. And then I met Megan and it was just kind of the same thing. Like I even told her the first day that we met, I'm like, look, you're, you know, we're just going to hook up and that's about it. <laughs> like that's uh, that's our situation. <laughs> I'm pretty open and honest. I didn't, I'm not going to lie to you here. And then we, like the first time we met, it was, it was very different because I was used to meeting girls that were, I don't know, like just so boring and stuff like that. And I would rather be the boring one and you be exciting because, you know, working, working out, that's all I do. But if all you do is nothing too, then it's not really fun. Um, so yeah, when I met her, she came back to my house, we sat in, uh, on my couch and we just ended up talking for a long time. And I just remember like some of the things she said, it was just so funny because my house is just so set up for just girls to come and go. Like I had bottles of wine and alcohol and like all this stuff, but I wasn't even drinking at the time. Like it was just total set up for that. Right. And she knew to noticed it right away. Right. And I don't know, I was just like, yeah, that's just what it is. Right. <laughs> like I'm not going to try to hide or lie or whatever. But then we just talked forever and talked for like four or five hours and just the things that she said about herself and things that I like was like analyzing and seeing and whatever, just like very contradictive of what she was doing. So like she was big into drugs and alcohol and dumb shit like that. But what she was saying is, I want to be a fashion designer. I want to be this. I want to be that. And I was just like, well, like nothing you say makes sense because like what you're doing doesn't make sense. And like I could tell that she wanted to do all the things she was saying she was doing, but she was just like the I'm the popular cool girl. So I'm going to do the popular cool girl stuff, mm -hmm. but it just not it like none of it made sense. So it was very intriguing. And then, yeah, just for the first probably two years of our relationship was a shit show, <laughs> to be honest, um, had to deal with so many crazy things that I never thought I would have to deal with. Um, but at the same time, it was also like, okay, maybe this is probably like karma or what, like what I did to girls or, you know, things that I had to just like learn to handle or deal with or whatever, because when quote unquote bad shit would happen before, I would yeah. just be like, cool. Like you're going to do that. I'm going to do this. Like, you're not, you're not going to change anything about me. Like it was so crazy because when me and Megan, like met and did that and then spent the night at 4 a.m i woke up and i was like you gotta go and she's like what the fuck like we went to bed like 15 minutes ago and i'm like yeah i have to go to the gym and i work two jobs so like i'll drop you off wherever you need to go and we got to go on and she was like mind blown about that because she's like i've never met someone that's just like you know you are so strict about everything like I had calendars on the wall like I wake up at this time I eat at this time I train at this time I go to work at this time and that's just the way I've always been and probably I always will be uh she's changed that for a little bit but I'm still like pretty rigid yeah rigid but it's as long as I get what I need to get done in the day then it's fine um, it doesn't have to happen at 7, 15, 8, 10, you know, like yeah. at that exact time anymore. But I do feel like I need to accomplish all that stuff or I won't feel good about the day. Right. Yeah. And that's OK. That's okay <laughs> like that. So what are some things that Megan has did to change you a little bit? What have you eased up on a bit of things? Uh mainly my schedule I would say that's probably the biggest thing that was changed just because when I met her and she was doing none of the stuff I wanted her to do and 
none of the stuff that I was like willing to compromise on. So even though I was a hundred percent sure that no matter who the next person was going to be, that I was going to commit to them, like no matter what, because I wasn't willing to keep doing this cycle of dating girls for two, three years and then breaking up and then relearning all that shit. And I was just at a point where I was like, like I have my shit together. I quote unquote have money. I'm a general manager. Like I thought, you know, where I was, was pretty much where it was going to be for the majority of my life until I started doing a business or something like that. But yeah, so the things that changed were just like my mindset about those things. It was, I'm still going to do these things, but it's going to be a little bit different now, I guess. And in the beginning, I was like, trying to like I knew I wasn't going to be able to deal with her habits and like her not working out and things like that because it was just so much of a conflict of interest if she didn't do those things um that I just like I didn't know how I was going to deal with it even though like I was dealing with it and then we just yeah slowly started bouncing that stuff off each other and I think like in the beginning it was really bad because I think she like I remember meeting her friends and I fucking hated them like and I still do to this day like I do not like the people she associates herself with at all and like I remember meeting them and we went to a garage party and all I saw was as soon as I walked in everybody's smoking weed everybody's getting drunk everybody's looks like like it was just I'm like what is this shit like I don't want to be around this and like why are you even a part of these people's lives and it's like it was just really weird because I already was a part of people's lives like that back in the day and like when I met Megan I was like quote unquote sober I quit drinking I quit doing anything that I didn't like doing because it just got me nowhere and I didn't want to do that stuff. So then Megan was like my first re-entry to like being around those people and things like that. And I just was like, I did not like it at all. And I just didn't like who she was when she was around those people, because when she was around me, it was completely different. And then when she was around them, it was completely different and like she saw that I hated it and her friends saw that I hated it and they thought oh Isaiah is here he's too good for us or blah 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 and it was never that it was just I didn't want to be a part of that life anymore it's like yeah. if you know if you want to do drugs and drink and you know do that stuff and like hang out in a garage and whatever like go do that but like I'm not gonna be a part of that and when I was forced to be a part of it it just was like so annoying yeah. so it was the same thing for her though right because when she met quote-unquote my friends like when she would when me and Caitlin would hang out like Caitlin has always been a problem in all of my relationships because Caitlin owns a business me and her would hang out and talk business all day we'd be on the phone talking we'd go to the gym together we would go hang out and she was a really attractive girl too and like even her husband now even he was like uncomfortable with it because of the connection we had yeah and they just didn't understand that what me and her had was super professional and super businessy and all we talked about was like hair on location and yeah. me starting a bodybuilding channel and me doing this and that but Megan would always feel like inferior because she was smoking weed every day and drinking every day and blah 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 so when she would see me and Caitlin hang out she'd be like oh is like Caitlin stealing my man or like she'll say that none of this is what went through her head but I can see it on her yeah, face so she, right yeah and a lot of women <laughs> get in, intimidated by other women and if they are stealing time away yeah period, exactly right? so when Th that's that was just the resistance and those are the things that we had to change together yeah. right and I think it's good I think you guys have changed a lot of that stuff together and 
you know, it's only mm -hmm. been three years, you're going to have more stuff to go through. Yeah, right? for sure. So is this it, it girl? Yeah. So this song is like, <laughs> all I can think about when I hear this song is Evan, one of my, like, I guess he would have been one of my supervisors at the time until I like out leveled him or whatever you would say in the, in the industry. But I just remember me and Evan, we would close together at Boston pizza. So we'd work till like three, 4 AM and we would just literally like no one would be in the restaurant. So we would blast music all night long and we would just get so wrecked on shift because the bartender that we had there was an alcoholic and we were all underage and he would always give us smoothies and stuff. So we'd always just get super drunk and then work all, all night. And he would always be dancing on counters, singing this song and stuff like that. Cause it was his like favorite jam, but that whole like Boston pizza crew. Oh my God. Like the things that just like happened and our friendship, it was just so insane because we just dated industry girls and industry girls were crazy and industry guys are crazy too. And you just put us all together getting drunk and doing dumb shit. It always, it always turned bad. Like yeah. always. So how did you hide all that from your mom? I don't even know. I didn't really even hide anything that I really recall. I, I was, you know, I think I was of age at, for most of that. Yeah. Like I became a manager at 17 and then I got fired. Well, I didn't get fired. I got de-promoted because when they gave me my gray coat is what they would call it in the, in at Boston pizza, we went to the bar to have like a manager meeting and I was like, well, fuck, like I'm just going to drink. So nobody notices. And Kathleen noticed right away because she checked my Facebook and it said I was like 17 or whatever. Yeah. And I like, I told my manager after like we left the room or whatever, I was like, like, what was I supposed to do? Like we're in a meeting everybody's drinking i don't want to be the odd one that's not drinking that just became a manager because then everybody will know yeah so then i lost my gray coat and whatever but then when i became 18 again i they yeah. gave me my management back so it's not like i was doing a lot of things until i was 18 or whatever i did party a bit when i was like 16 and stuff like that house? yeah i snuck out of the house really how'd you get out I don't know. You don't remember just, how you got out of the house? No, I don't really remember that stuff so, because it's just that's so insignificant to me. Like, I feel like I'm sure I just walked out the front door. It's not like I jumped from the roof or anything did, crazy like that. Did you sneak girls into the house when we were home? No, I don't no, think I ever did that. Do that. I don't even know how I would have did that. <laughs> <laughs> so I know you do a lot of reading. Mm -hmm. So what book has impacted you the most? um there's really no set book um i remember the first book i ever read though that was like more than fiction so tony robbins awake the giant or whatever awaken the giant within yeah i remember reading that book and then just like doing the visualization exercises and things like that and it was just like it wasn't like a profound thing but it was just like this like what is this style of literature right yeah because i just remember like in school we would read like dumb shit like oh what the hell is that book that everybody has to read in school like i don't even remember school like i don't i was never really a part of school even though i was there um but i just remember like all the things that we read were just it was useless everything i learned in school was useless and then i was like you know, a part of a rugby team. I was on like the senior men's division. We won provincial championships. So like I was the, the cool kid or whatever, right? Yeah. Like I wasn't the cool kid until um, high school, but 
that when I went to high school that I was the cool kid or whatever girls liked me and not oh, like you're attractive yeah it's not like anything special or whatever but like it was just it was a different uh scene because when I was a kid it was the complete opposite I got made fun of a lot and you did what nobody did liked fun of you about? my unibrow and things like that oh wow and then I was just like I decided that when I went to high school, I was going to be cool. That was it. Like when, when the summer happened, I decided I was going to be cool and I was going to look good. And this was going to be the new me kind of thing. And then I, I even remember when I went to high school, like even after high school, like girls would message me and be like, yeah, like I had a crush on you in grade six or seven. And I was like, but like you used to make fun of me like I don't well, I, tell you that they have a yeah but like like I don't get it right <laughs> like it, it made no sense I was like you made fun of me with all the other kids <laughs> and like eight years later you're messaging me right but yeah when it came to books and stuff like that it was I read that book and I was interested enough to read other books and then I started reading a lot because I was like okay, I'm here, but I don't really like where I am. Uh, I'm the cool kid, the party kid, the girls like me, but I never resonated with that. I was like, it was just something I wanted to be. So people thought I was that. And really, when I was, quote unquote, by myself, I didn't like any of that stuff. So I would have rather been in the gym, I would have rather been doing x, y, and z. But I thought, going out to the clubs and taking girls home and things like that was like the cool thing to do. And that's what like, not like society or anything, but that's what like, that's what immature dumb guys think are really cool. And the reality is none of that's cool. None of that even makes you anything. It honestly probably just makes you more sad and depressed and in reality. That's right. I agree. That's a good quote, Isaiah. This next song. Chelsea, who's this band? Uh, Metro Station. Yeah. So, why you like what? What's what is it about that song or that group? I I used to listen to them a lot um, when playing World of Warcraft when I was like probably like eleven, twelve. Um, it was. I think there was like a YouTube video of this guy and it was so weird because it was like a really hardcore like YouTube video of him doing like really amazing at this game but the music he had on the background just made like no sense because this (laughs) song is like basically about a guy saying he'll do anything for this girl right so you're like watching this like barbarian two-handed axe guy like slaughtering people while this song's playing and that's the only reason why i remember is because i was like the fuck am i watching right now like it's really cool this video but like the music makes no sense and then we we started listening to the this band like as a joke while playing world of warcraft when we were younger like when I hung out with Jaden and Tyler and stuff in his yeah. basement. And then, yeah, we just, we listened to this band and like boys, like girls and like things like that. And then we just kind of, it was just kind of our thing. We would play yeah. World of Warcraft for like 15 hours and we would listen to these really girly <laughs> guy bands. <laughs> and yeah, like. It's crazy. What's your favorite family vacation you ever had? Uh, I don't even know. I uh, I I don't know. I think one of the really good ones I remember was like the cruise ship, but it's not like I had a super favorite one. Like they were all really good. It's just yeah, I don't honestly. You like hanging out with your parents? I mean, it's like yes and no at the same time, right? No, what's the no part? Well, because you're always busting my balls about I should be more fun and blah, blah, blah. But I just want to work and do that and then have fun when I'm 40. <laughs> I, that's what I'm built for. Okay, of all the ways to die, what do you fear the most? 
I I don't even like really fear death, honestly. I mean, everybody like. What way to die would be awful? I mean, they're all would be pretty <laughs> awful to die, but I just like it's just a natural thing. Like, I don't even really get like the whole death thing like people probably call me a psychopath or you know whatever I don't have feelings but it's just the reality people die and like it happens and you move on like just so many things that just like don't make sense to me it's like a death will like hinder someone for like like one that's coming to my mind right now is like my current like Megan's ex-boyfriend like she still gets upset about like some guy six years ago and like I have nothing nice to say about him like when you decide to do drugs and drink and drive like what do you expect to happen right Mm -hmm. and I get that it's a bad thing I had one of my ex-girlfriends try to kill herself too she slid her wrist but I don't like that doesn't affect me like and I had that girl tell me that she wanted to kill herself because of me and I was sad but when I got older I was like none of that's like their choice right so any kind of death to me is like if you die from old age or you die from like a coincidence or whatever, it just happens. Like there's nothing you can do about it. Like Mm -hmm. there's no reason for you to be, to let that death like ruin your life. Right. Like so many people let these things that like happen, ruin their entire life. Like, like they'll, they'll be a drug addict for like a year or two. And then for the rest of their life, they identify as a drug addict or their best friend kills themselves. And now they can never find a new friend again or things like that. So for me, it's like when, when people die and things like happen like that, like, I'm just like, okay, it happened. Yes. It sucks. Depending on who it is, obviously you have feelings. If I died, you're not. Yeah. You should probably be in yeah. a fetal position for a good fucking year. <laughs> I don't know about that. I like I I would be upset, right? But like when people tell me that like their like step cousin died and they need to take like a week off work, I'm like it doesn't make sense to me. Like a month ago we had someone die at our job. Um he just had a heart attack at work or whatever and died. And like everybody at work was like so sad. And I'm like, I wasn't sad at all. Like I've I've never met this guy before. I don't even know what he looks like. I've heard him talk in chat before and I've had a phone call with him, but like, I'm not going to be sad for a week. Like, yeah, it sucks that he died, but like, (laughs) what's uh, (laughs) no, and that's fine. Like, that's the thing I like. I understand. I get where you're coming from for sure. Yeah. Like, so, I mean, I don't have a really good answer. It's, yeah, I think you gave a really good answer. Death sucks, but at the end of the day, like, it doesn't you, have to take control of your whole life. And you don't, and you can't, you don't get to choose how you die either way. So it's like, that's right. All right. Great, great artist. My name is, my name is, my name is, it's Liam Sadie. All right. Eminem. Yeah, so with Eminem, uh, I only picked this song because there's so many more I like, and this is the least favorite song I like. So I I picked this song mainly because there's the first Eminem Eminem song I ever heard, and the only glimpse or kind of like memory I have of it is just hearing it when you played it in in a car. I don't even know what that car was or how old I was or whatever. But I just remember hearing it and was like, what the fuck is this? Because I've never heard this before. And I was so young that like, obviously, it's like a new stimulus and yeah. whatever, I whatever it is, my brain's going, what the hell? Um, and then Eminem has like more of an impact on me than any other artist and any other thing probably in my whole entire life because 
I've listened to every song Eminem's ever made, and I can probably lyrically speak every word of every one of his songs. Um, there was a point where I was actually listening to like almost 200 of his songs on my playlist. Um, I had an old laptop actually that crashed on me and I lost 12,000 songs of music. And I think I had his entire discography, which is like 500, 600 songs. And I could listen to all those and like all those. But I went through phases with Eminem. Like, um, I would listen to really, really fucked up songs about him. Like, um, like the song Kim. And um, I mean, that's probably the worst one. I don't even think it's like, I don't even know if you can find it anymore, but basically it describes him seeing his wife cheat on him and then he chases her through a forest and then strangles her and kills her and whatever and the shit that she did to him right like he like vocalized really aggressively in his music and I resonated with a lot of that at that time because my like I said my ex there she slit her wrists and things like that and blamed me for a lot of things and I was like 13 14 so like at that age you just like don't understand right you're like what is going on like I don't even know what this is why are you doing this with scissors and shit like that and I just uh I just remember being so angry and then like listening to songs like that and it would just like feed into my anger but it would also like make me feel like I was doing something about it. Like it, it was really weird. Like I, I would be so angry and then I would listen to like a song like that and like sing it. And then I would be fine after. And it was just this weird like cycle that I would go through with particularly his music because he sang a lot about really fucked up shit and a lot of really fucked up stuff was happening at the time. So I listened yeah. to it, but then even more recently like he just gets better and better with everything he does and like his new album is like ridiculous like when he came back and made an entire random album about dissing all the rappers in the industry like all at once um i was like blown away because the way i listen to music is i listen to the words i don't listen to Oh, the beat's really cool. Yeah. That like I listen to what they say, how they say it, and what the analogies are and the stories they tell. So when I listen to his music, I'll listen to a song once, like a hundred times. And every time I listen to it, there's a different way of him speaking or yeah. a thing I didn't catch or see. And that's the and that's the reason why I like am crazy for Eminem because of it. It's like it. his awesome. music is insane and i like i i i think there's probably better rappers out there than him but i don't think anybody can do what he does as good as he does like he read the okay. he read the dictionary like when he speaks he makes an entire like sentence make sense even though if it doesn't make sense yeah like there's a song called rain man and it's a song about nothing like it makes zero sense he makes no sense in the entire song but somehow the song makes sense like it's <laughs> so it. weird it's awesome so this song that i'm gonna play next i actually sent to to bethany yeah because i thought she would laugh right info I've yeah yeah so you're gonna tell me that you're a nympho is that what you're gonna tell your mom no okay. the reason why i picked this song it was a toss-up between this and a song called swagger by datsik the reason why i didn't pick swagger even though it was the first dubstep song i ever heard in my entire life is because this is the first style so this is the first subgenre of dubstep that i heard that i liked more than dubstep so borg or he made a style of music called gore step and it's just super aggressive really high pitch weird frequencies basically and when i heard this song 
I didn't even really like it. I was like, what the hell is this the sound? Yeah. Um, but it was more fast paced and more upbeat than that like old school dubstep that was just like wobble wobble shit, yeah. which I liked. It was just too slow. Um, so then when he came out with this stuff, he was actually a porn star at the time. So this album is basically him talking about whether he wants to continue being a porn star or if he wants to go into the music industry. So this album is basically just that and him putting himself out there and being like, look, this is what I make. And he's a very niche artist. Um, he became really popular because he made some big room house stuff that everybody likes. But anytime I've seen him live, I've seen him live every single time he comes to Calgary or Canada. Um, he plays super over the top, really aggressive music that you never heard before because he doesn't do sets or anything like that. And half of his music, he doesn't even play. He just makes things happen live. And uh, he's probably the best artist I've ever seen live um, when it comes to that style of music. And I remember it's a... <laughs> I remember being so high on drugs one day that I was at this rave and he did a song, uh, a remix to Wiggle by Jason Derulo. And when the bass dropped, I cried. Everybody was jumping up and down and I just stood in the crowd and started crying and didn't move. Like it was so weird, but it, it, the way it sounded and felt, I was just like, this is like ridiculous. And I've always loved his like style of music. And I've all like, I've always loved that when he comes live, he's like there for a good time. Like even during uh, like COVID right now, he's still doing live DJ shows in his basement. Like he, he's by himself with turntables, like dancing and having a good time. Most artists right now, they're just like, fuck it. I'm not going to make music anymore, whatever my career's over or yeah. they just don't care. He's They're like, embracing. yeah, like he's like, okay, like how can I do something? Because this is like actually what I like to do. And so many people just do what the industry says, make their hits, collect their revenue checks and leave. Like I've listened to so many artists that are just fucking garbage now. And even these artists now that, I, I, I may not like like the weekend's new album or Borgor's new album or whatever, but at least they're still doing stuff like they're not making this excuse of, oh, I, I can't go do tour shows, so I can't do it. It's like, well, you have a camera. Yeah, you can use your YouTube platform. That's right. You can still put your name as your platform. Right? Yeah, like and so what are your biggest pet peeves, Isaiah? Uh, Just two. Don't give me. 15 yeah i mean just cleanliness has always been a pet peeve of mine so your house being like you got that from me yeah I know. so how did you get that from me though just watching me clean all the time <laughs> like no. our house was never dirty i know i just think uh it's so efficient that's the way i see it um i clean my house once a week but it stays clean the entire week uh, I just don't understand people that are not cleanly. And like when I see like spit on a sink or on a mirror or like piss on a toilet seat or uh, like clothes on the floor instead of a laundry hamper, like to me, it just means like if you can't even like clean up your toilet seat like if you can't even put the clothes beside the basket in the basket like i just like i don't think you can function like i like how how can you go about your life like it and like simple things like making your bed and shit like that like i, I don't get why people don't do that stuff and then they wonder like to me they wonder why like um why can't i do this or that and like that's how I got all my promotions in any company I've ever worked for. How I climbed to the top was I did all the shit that people were like, what the hell? Like, why would you do this? Like, I remember when I cleaned Boston Pizza's kitchen 
And I was, I was only a dishwasher for like three days, but my, my first shift there, I was like, this kitchen is disgusting. And I stayed after my shift and I cleaned the entire kitchen. Like I worked like 16 hours straight. The next day, the managers came in. They're like, what the fuck? What's happened? I was like, I clean this. Like, how can you work in this environment? Like it needs to be clean. It needs to be tidy. <laughs> and if it's clean, it's tidy. Then we yeah. can get things done. What's your other pet peeve? Um, my other pet peeve. I mean, I, I have like a lot, <laughs> I don't know. Um, but what would be another one that drives you crazy? I would say people that complain, but do nothing about it. That's a good one. Um, I mean, I'm no perfect saint or whatever. I do the same shit. Like today I'm not having a good day at work and I'm pissed off. I know you're doing really well. Um, but like chronic complaining, but not willing to do anything about it drives me insane because I, I, I hate to always do this to Megan. Cause like, she's just the most recent one, <laughs> <laughs> but I've dated her for so long. And like, people like people don't understand how we're together and like people question a lot of things and like whatever right but I like and yes I'm hard on her and and it's the same way like don't get me wrong she does the same shit to me and it's not a bad thing but like I've made my investment in her so when I like complain or or I see this stuff I always am like like Megan would always complain about these friends that she still hangs out with like they do this, they do that. Or she would complain that, you know, she gained some weight or she you don't like complainers. Yeah. Generally. So let's not go down. the main No, no, goal. it's, it's not that it's not even that it's just people in general, like yeah. even at work, like people will be like, um, fuck this happened just today. Someone complained that, uh, like this one girl, Kim. Oh my God, mom. I honestly, <laughs> I, this girl, every day you're like hey good morning and she's like oh it's been a horrible it's like 5 a.m kim okay how could your day be horrible like i literally just woke up and i poured a coffee and this girl's like every day mom oh my gosh she's like she's like yeah you know my kids her kid's been sick for like 12 months okay <laughs> my kid's sick. My husband doesn't want to work. I have to build a fence. And I'm just like, and I don't get it. Right. Like I, when, when people, it doesn't matter who it is, anybody, even when I do it, I like, I'll complain and then I'll be really upset or sad or whatever. And then I'll go lay in bed. I do this all the time. Actually, I'll go lay in bed after work. And I'm like, I had a shitty day. Fuck everybody. Fuck work. I'm just going to quit my job. As soon as I lay in bed, I go, what am I doing? Like, I fucked up. I, you know what? The day was bad because I was mad at 6 a.m. and then I worked eight hours mad. Now I'm laying in bed, giving up, realizing what the fuck am I giving up for? Yeah. I should have did something about it, right? So that's Good. that's that's a problem. <laughs> so welcome home. Yeah. So this song, this is like the first song I wanted to learn. Well, maybe not in the first song, but one of the songs I really wanted to learn how to play on a guitar. Yeah. Um, so I did like some lessons for it and I never really got good at guitar. I got like fairly good at um, saxophone when I played saxophone, um, but I never really got good at guitar or whatever. But I remember I told dad that I wanted to learn the song and he tried to teach me it and just wasn't really working. And then whatever like happened uh I don't know if it was the same day or whatever I just remember well we played uh we tried and we tried and we tried but one night we just played I probably ruined his guitar honestly but we just played on his guitar and just like made a bunch of sounds and was like yeah. going hard with the electric guitar and stuff and nothing was making sense and nothing was sounding probably pretty good either but it was just like a fun time that we we had together when I was really young. And yeah, then that was it. So like when anytime I hear that song, like that's it just kind of reminds me of that. It's nothing like oh, it's a good memory. Yeah. What is one thing that your mother has taught you? 
I mean, you've taught me a lot, to be honest. It's just... What are some things that I've taught you? I don't know. It's, like, hard to, like, pinpoint something. Um, everything that I've been taught, I've either still still implemented it or I've spent the majority of my mature life unlearning those things and re and and like changing them to like more values that I believe in or whatever yeah so it's like every you 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 and dad essentially taught me everything it's like yeah I mean we can say we learn things by ourselves but it's always a monkey see monkey do thing so um everything that I've just learned everything from you and I've either agreed with it or I've not. So I don't, I don't know how to like pinpoint something down. Like I've ever, is there something that I've taught you that, um, has been instrumental in your life? Um, I don't know. I think, I think one big thing that's probably stuck with me forever would be just like, I wouldn't say it's attitude, but it, it might be, um in the context that the way you like speak and do your thing and a lot of the time it's um I don't want to say it's like a fuck you attitude or whatever but it's like I'm gonna say this and you're either gonna accept it or not and that's where it is and that's the hill I'll die on per se right yeah so I have pretty much always been that way um it's why I've been fired. It's why I've been, you know, like there's so many bad things that have happened with that, but it's always been something I've stayed true to is this is how it is. This is how it's going to be. And this is how I'm going to say it. And it's up to you if like you want to accept it or not. And like an example of this happened last, last week at work, uh, we were having this conversation about, um, I don't even fucking know why we do this at work, but they were talking about multiple genders and stuff like that. And I was like, there's two, you either have a penis or a vagina. Right. And you know what, you can argue with me till you're blue in the face. Um, but you know, I went to school for this. Like <laughs> I'm a personal trainer, nutritionist. I've studied biology. I studied human sciences. Like I'm certified in this stuff. So my sciences and my beliefs in this stuff are pretty much backed by science right and um uh my manager she said i was very narrow-sighted and then i said to her well i live a life of facts over feelings so if something's a fact i don't really care if it hurts your feelings or your beliefs or your opinions or whatever it is what it is and you can either accept it or not and that attitude has gotten me in a lot of trouble but it's also i probably have a lot of respect from a lot of people like i yeah, feel like I think it's good i think it's a good attitude yeah to be able to express yourself say how you feel i've always been a big believer in that and i think it's a good thing that you have adapted that yeah. from me for sure and i mean another thing with that is it's also i've also been wrong on a lot of those opinions and beliefs too so now I adapt, I have that same mentality, but I also adopted the mentality of, okay, well, I'll listen, I'll, I'll listen. listen. You tell me what you believe. I'll put my guard down or whatever and listen to it, but I may not accept it. Yeah. And then I'll tell you how I feel. So when I was younger, I was the fuck you mentality. Now I'm the still fuck you mentality, <laughs> but you can tell me what you want to tell me. Right. And yeah. you know what, if I'm wrong, then that's a new conversation. Then we can go from there. Yeah, I love it. All right. Touch it on mine. Yeah. Guys are low. Yeah. So this band, they won a YouTube contest for who can make the most like coolest video or whatever. I think it was like something like so little and minuscule. They won like 500 bucks, right? And these guys like, they're like fuck sweet we're gonna keep doing this shit right like we won money yeah and um they're kind of like a corny cheesy band or they still make music but whatever but i remember this song specifically uh 
when I was like big into my party phase, when we would hang out at like Jaden's house with Tyler, we would always have like girls over and we'd always be partying or whatever. This was always the like, this was like the start of the party song. Like this band was like whatever. But it's so funny because I, I don't even think about like good times with the girls or the guys. I think about at the end of the night when like Tyler would go outside and punch a fucking mailbox and break his hand because Ashley made out with Evan and Ashley's dating Tyler or like I was dating Natasha and Natasha would like cheat on me. Like that's the stuff I think about when I hear this song. It's not pleasant memories. Well, it's not like it's not pleasant, but it was just kind of funny because the the initial band was always like the really party stuff but then it always turned into this huge clusterfuck like all yeah. those all those the alcohol and drugs are involved yeah all those parties would be like super fun in the beginning and then at the end of the night it was always like ashley ashley pill beam oh my god this girl mom she would do the most horrific things to tyler and then she would just disappear. It'd be like 3 a.m. And she would be like walking down Mackenzie Town in the middle of the night. No one around, nothing on a fucking Saturday night wearing like a skimpy outfit, right? And then we would have to go find this chick in the middle of nowhere every Friday night or every Saturday. So like the, the whole industry of uh, like serving and all that stuff like as much as like it like i learned a lot from that i fucking hate that industry because it makes you think that you're like having a good time and partying and all that stuff but it is literally the worst industry like yeah. you you, you learn good things and like good values and customer service and how to deal with like yeah. someone yelling at you and things like that but i think it's just when everybody gets off work and everybody parties together and then you mix drugs, alcohol and people dating or the, and people not dating, but liking the other person. And then you're all having like these like orgies at the house, like it's not, it's not good at all. <laughs> <laughs> and then you all go to work the next day That's and you're right. like, oh, it's fine. Like, even though I fucking hate you because I saw you cheat on me last night with X, Y and Z. Like, yeah. Crazy. This is your last song, Isaiah. You ready? Mm -hmm. Run this. Rob Bailey. This guy's a little crazy. Yeah. I mean, so Rob Bailey, it's not even really so much him. It's more his wife that has like really like solidified what I want to kind of do and how I want to do. Um, this song is the first song I heard of them and it was her it was Dana and she was doing a posing routine after the Olympia that she won so he basically told his wife look make this shit happen if you want to make it happen change the whole narrative of women being petite and fragile and whatever and go be a Mr. Olympian or Mrs. Olympian, as you would say. Um, so she did that. Like she won. She created uh, female physique because at the time there was men, there was bodybuilding, female bodybuilding, and figure. And figure is a girl that, like, I used to train figure girls. And how I would get them in shape is I would uh, basically tell them to stop going out on Friday nights. Like, just stop drinking vodka. You'll be ready for a show. You just have to put on a skimpy bikini and bend over and show your ass. Yeah. You'll win. Like, I've won. I've helped a lot of girls win those shows. Uh, but she was, like, very muscular. And after this show, like, she looked like she was probably about to die. Like, she was so lean, so vascular, so gross looking. Um, but to me, it was amazing. Uh, just because I was like, this girl is so dedicated, right? Yeah so dedicated to her craft and then I started listening to how he spoke about his wife and that's when it like really clicked for me and just his mentality is uh fuck uh fuck everything kill e kill e everything I think that's I think that's his slogan right now he's had a few so yeah. first one was flag nor fail which is the company he created 
Um, and basically that means never give up, never surrender. And that's his whole mentality is everything he does is I'm going to do it whether you like it or not. And no matter what I do, it's going to happen. Um, so this album and this artist is that's what he did. He said, this reminds me of you. He said, yeah, he basically said, I'm going to, I'm going to, I want to be a singer. So I'm going to be a singer. Then he became a singer. I want to be a pilot. I'm going to become a pilot, became a pilot. I want to have the biggest supplement company in the world. Okay. I'm making a supplement company. And that's just, he talked and his wife talks about her like that. And this girl's crazy. Like she'll do like 300 rep drop sets and you'll watch her and you're like this eight minute video of her doing shoulder raises. And he's like screaming in her face, like, go push, like, come on, let's go. And people look at them like, okay, buddy, like chill, relax. But they fucking love that. Like, so what do you want to do? Isaiah? Well, that's basically what I want to do. I want to do my podcast and my YouTube channel and stuff like that. And I'm heavily uh, involved in redefining quote unquote masculinity right now. I think that's a really big issue in the world. And for me, I never really understood what I thought I was lacking. And now I realize that's pretty much what I was lacking. Um, it's not in this like egotistical, like I'm the man kind of way. It's more of a, I never really was a man, right? <laughs> like I, I, uh, I didn't have any values. I, you know, wasn't doing this. I wasn't doing that. Um, I didn't really have any kind of direction. I didn't have, um, like quote on, like I had a father obviously, but like, he's not there. And now I have Tyler, but I just like that when I started listening to, or getting involved in that space, more or less, that's when I started realizing that, okay, this is kind of what I want to do and what I want to be a part of because, um, I can do everything that my dad taught me the opposite of it. So I don't get hell bent up out of him leaving like me and him. We had our conversation. We, you know, buried the hatchet or whatever you want to say, but yeah, I just want to do all that. So everything that he didn't do, I want to do. And I see a massive lack for that. Um, not like, all the partying and all the girls and all that stuff, all that stuff taught me was I was lacking in so many other things. And I want to teach, you know, boys or men, um, you know, chasing girls, doing drugs, um, you know, not having a wife and not having kids and walking away from them. That's, not okay yeah it's not okay and you shouldn't do any of that and you know if you want to be a real man then you need to take care of your responsibilities yeah you take care of your responsibilities if you make the decision to do whatever there's a consequence for it and whatever that consequence is you have to live with it whether it's a kid or not or whatever right it could be something simple but if you have a kid then you're it's your obligation to take care of them i would say um, you know, it is, it's, sure. it's not, it's not someone else's responsibility to come in and take care of the kid and things like that. So I just, I see a lot, I see so many things happening with so many people and it's getting worse and worse and worse. And I I'm learning about this stuff and it's, um, I'm listening to podcasts from 2015 and p- the people I listen to, they are saying there's a problem with it now then yeah and now it's like six seven years down the road and now i only see problems with that no respect no anything no ambition the guys and girls that i talk to they don't want to do anything like the environment i work in they just collect minimum wage like there's such a lack of like good leadership for men and women yeah but I can't speak on a woman's behalf because I'm not a woman. So for me, my job is, I think is to learn this and then teach it. And then hopefully my partner, she wants to learn that side. Like she's really learning all that stuff right now. She's, she loves that. I love it. It's awesome. I appreciate you being on music junkies today, Isaiah. If I, if you could (laughs) tell, obviously I think you said so much with that ending comment, but if you were to, um, you know, give some advice, some Isaiah advice to somebody that was maybe listening, what would be some advice that you would, some words of wisdom that you'd like to leave? Mm. 
I don't really know, honestly. Like once I kind of figure everything out and <laughs> and and make my own stuff, then I can give some advice. But the way I look at it is I am more learning. I'm not in a position to really give advice, I would say. I'm more of in a position of okay, this is like something new for me. I'm learning this. Uh, I want to learn as much as I can from it. And before I put my foot in my mouth, you know, I, I would like to learn it. And then if, if I could say, you know, don't do what I did, it would be simple. But how can I tell you don't do what I did without showing you what I've done, right? Like, no, I don't know. I love it. So I, I got a lot to learn before I start giving advice. And that's, that's where I'm at in life right now. I love it. That, I'm impressed. <laughs> Well, again, thanks, Isaiah, for joining us on Music Junkies. Like, subscribe, follow. You can find Isaiah on Instagram. Appreciate you, my son. Love you so much. Yeah. Finally, 50 episodes finally gets on the show. And yeah. we'll definitely have you again, for sure. Okay. <laughs>